أني يا نور هدايا أسري فيك إلى الغاية أتلو الآية والآية وبذا يسمو إيمان I want to say something very important. When it comes to the laws of inheritance, those who don't know Islam from among the non-Muslims and from among the ignorant Muslims, they pick on the fact that women seemingly get less than men when it comes to inheritance. Don't they say that? They say, look, take a look at this. Islam says, لِلذَّكَرِ مِثْلُ حَظِّ الْأُنْثَيَيْنِ A male will get double the portion of a female. Wow. So they say that's very unfair. Well, I can explain it to you from a very simple perspective today. That in actual fact, even though in figures it might seem that the male has got more, in reality, the female got more. You might say, how? You know, don't try and pull cotton wool over our eyes. No, I'm not. I'll explain to you. A male responsibility extends well beyond himself. Female has a responsibility, even her own upkeep. It's the responsibility of a close male, the closest male. And Allah knows that sometimes when that male happens to be a little bit further, he may not fulfill those rights. So he says, the further the male, the bigger your share. Amazing. So if you have a relative, for example, you have a father who passed away and he left behind, say for example, 75 million ringgates. Let's make it a bit interesting, okay? 75 million ringgates and you are there, your brother is there and that's it. The chances of your brother looking after you are quite big, especially if you've been brought up together in a decent home. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has dictated that the brother gets 50 million and you get 25 million. And here everybody gets up and say, that's unfair, unfair. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. That 50 million is not exclusively for him, but the 25 million is exclusively yours. That's how special daughters are. 25 million exclusively yours. What do you do with it? Well, it's just exclusively yours for over and above the duty. So what happens with the 50 million? That man, if he's the closest male relative to you, guess what? He owes you food, clothing, accommodation, and basic necessities such as medicine and so on. He needs to look after you. With what? Within his 50 million. And on top of that, he has his own wife to look after. And on top of that, he has his own daughters and children to look after. And on top of that, he may be having so many other responsibilities. So if you divide the 50 million, into the 10 people that he has to look after, it's on average 5 million each. You are sitting with 25 million and guess what? You've just got another five. <laughs> Simple logic. The problem people are blaming Islam because some of the males are running away from that responsibility. That's the reason. So don't blame Islam. It's a perfect system. The problem is we've stopped following it in the way we are supposed to. A mu'min and a mu'mina. A true believing male or female should be such that when they believe and they claim to believe, they surrender to what Allah says. Surah Al Ahzab, Allah says. It is not for a believing male or female that when Allah or His Messenger have decided something, they feel they have a choice in that regard. True believing males and females feel we don't have a choice in this regard. Come time for salah, I don't have a choice, I must fulfill. Dress in a specific way, I don't have a choice, I must fulfill. Come to worshipping Allah alone, I don't have a choice, I must fulfill. Abstaining from something prohibited, I don't have a choice, I must abstain. So look at how a female gets more. I can let you in on something even greater. If you are only one female, you are the only daughter, for example, and the rest of the relatives happen to be distant, like you might have an uncle. You know, the deceased man has brothers and sisters, and he has you as a daughter. Guess what? Allah dictates in the Quran that you give her half of the wealth. Whoa, half of it must go to her herself. Even if her mother is alive, meaning even if the wife of that man who passed on is alive, let's word it that way. 
The daughter will get half, 50%. Why? Because now the male relatives are a little bit more distant. The chances of them dilly-dallying become a little bit greater. So Allah says, don't worry. It's still his duty, but in case he doesn't, you can go ahead. This is an amount that will cover you by the will of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And on top of that, if you were two girls, just two daughters, guess what? You go away with two-thirds, 66.66% of that wealth. That is the biggest share in inheritance. It goes to the females. The biggest share. Nowhere does it say a male will get 66%. Never. It's only for females. Why? Because daughters are special. That's the reason. So special that Allah has dedicated an entire surah in the Quran as Surah to Nisa. Have you ever seen a surah, Surah to Rijal? Surah of the men? There is a whole chapter known as the females, the women. There is no chapter known as the men. And in there, Allah speaks of the treatment of women and how you have to be even more patient with them and how you have to be kind. You have to consider that their emotions are slightly different. You have to make sure that you have taken care of them in a beautiful way because they are special. Surah An-Nisa starts off by making mention of a child who doesn't even have a father to defend her. Surah An-Nisa starts off by making mention of Al-Yatama, those who are orphans, those who don't even have a father to defend them. And Allah says, be careful, do not usurp the wealth of the orphans. وَلَا تَأْكُلُوا أَمْوَالَهُمْ إِلَىٰ أَمْوَالِكُمْ Don't eat their wealth. Don't mix their wealth with yours. Give them their due. It is theirs. Don't cheat the women out of their share in inheritance. Daughters are special. You know, if a father passes on and he may have left some property, some business, sometimes you find the women don't really know what was going on. So, you find male relatives coming in and saying, you know, your father had this and this and this, and they have a huge building in the center of KL, and they come to you and say, that building was one million ringgits. And you say, wow. And you don't know it was actually 100 million. What did they do to you? They robbed you because you didn't know. So Allah warns them to say, hang on, don't rob them. Don't take advantage of the fact that they might be ignorant of what was there. No, you value it correctly. You give it to them correctly. You make sure you give it to them on time. You make sure you look after them. They are special. That is the way you will earn paradise. When Allah completes the verses of inheritance and how it is supposed to be split, you know what He says? He says, whoever is going to fulfill these rules correctly for them will be paradise. These are the limits of Allah. And whomsoever is going to usurp and whomsoever is going to cheat for them, what is more befitting than to be cast into hellfire? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. So this is the gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because daughters are special.